Today we are going to start on a new topic called the Geisha State. For the topic of Geisha State, uh, this topic uh, is a very mathematical topic. So there are uh, many equations to be learned. So this is the content page of uh, the Geisha State. The kinetic theory of gases uh, is very important in this topic. So there are actually five basic assumptions for the kinetic theory. But there are only two assumptions that you should know by heart, which is uh, point number two and point number three. Point number two says that the gas particles have negligible volume as compared to the volume of container in which the gas occupies. Point number three, the gaseous particles exert intermolecular forces which are negligible on one and another. Now let's look at example one, which I will go through with you step by step. So the volume of an oxygen molecule is 64 times 10 minus 30 meter cube. This is a very small volume, which is expected of a gaseous particle. So we are asked to estimate the volume of one mole of oxygen molecules. So if we imagine that this uh, one mole of oxygen molecules are packed together side by side. For part B, what is the percentage of this one mole of oxygen gas in terms of volume compared to the value calculated at RTP? We will now calculate volume of one mole of oxygen gas at RTP. So we make use of the knowledge we have learned under the topic called moles and stoichiometry. So one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 24 dm cube under 298 Kelvin and 1 atm. So if we to calculate the percentage, we will take 3.85 times 10 minus 5 over 24 times 10 minus 3 times 100. We get a very small percentage of 0.160% to 3 SF. So what does this very small value mean okay this means that uh point number two in our kinetic theory of gases is valid so the gaseous particles when they occupy the volume of a container they are spaced far apart so they occupy negligible volume as compared to the volume of the container now to define the kinetic theory of gases there are four independent variables that we should be aware of pressure volume, temperature, and amount of gas in terms of number of moles. We will now take a look at the pressure of a gas. Now, under the kinetic theory, the gaseous particles are moving about in all directions at all possible speeds. So they will collide with the walls of the container. Okay, by colliding with the walls of the container, there is actually a force exerted and pressure is actually defined as the force exerted per unit area on the walls of the container. Now the pressure of a gas can actually be defined using different units. So normally for the pressure of gas, we will talk about the pressure exerted on a substance at sea level. So this can be called 1 atm, which is actually 101325 Pascal. Or if we use a very dense liquid called mercury, the pressure exerted by the atmosphere at sea level actually correspond to a length of 760 mm of mercury. The next variable we are going to look into is the volume of a gas. It actually refers to the volume of the container. Okay, so this is actually related to uh, point number two or assumption number two under kinetic theory of gases. And I already showed you one of the calculations in the previous slide. The next uh, variable we are looking into is the temperature of gas. So actually the temperature of gas is closely related to the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. I think uh, this will be very familiar for the physics student. And temperature of the gas is uh, normally expressed in Kelvin for calculation purposes. Ideal gas equation is the equation that we should be very familiar with for this topic. So it is actually PV equals to nRT. So for every equation, we must be very aware of the units for the different variables. So pressure is in Pascal or Newton per meter square, volume in meter cube, 
amount in number of moles. R can be found in the data booklet, which has a numerical value of 8.31, and temperature must be in Kelvin. Now for example 2, I would like you to pause the video for around 5 minutes to let you have the opportunity to apply ideal gas equation to solve this question. Uh, for the conscientious students that have tried uh, to solve this question, first you have to make use of the ideal gas equation, pressure in Pascal, volume in meter cube, and temperature in uh, Kelvin, so that you can get the number of moles to be 1.688 moles. After that, you make use of the mole ratio, which is 2 is to 3, and you take 1.688 times 2 over 3, and after that to get to uh, calculate uh, mass, you have to take the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. And the final answer is 73.2 grams. Okay, this slide we are going to examine Boyce's Law and Charles' Law. You may want to whip up your phone to uh, take the QR code and see the contents of uh, what this QR code shows. Now let us examine Boyce's Law in detail. So for a fixed mass of gas and at a constant temperature, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. So what does Boyle law means to me? means that when the pressure is high, the volume uh, occupied by the gas will be small. Okay, or alternatively, we can say PV equals to a constant. And you can prove it to yourself by using the ideal gas equation. So Boyle's law can also be known as P1V1 equals to P2V2. Let us now take a deeper look at Boyle's law. So remember, Boyle's law has certain conditions imposed of it. Uh, it is for a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature. So if you do some manipulation, you will realize that V is inversely proportional to P. The numerator is actually K, which is equals to NRT. NRT is a constant. Okay, so if you were to plot B against P, it is a parabola. Okay, and this is how the graph looks like. From the previous slide, we say that V was inversely proportional to P. And if you were to have follow uh, attentively in the previous slide, I said the numerator was k, and k equals to nRT, which is a constant. So if we were to change to plot uh, v against 1 over p, it will become a straight line passing through the origin. Okay, And the gradient of this straight line is equal to nRT. Uh, we will take a, another look at Boyce's law. So remember, we were saying for Boyce's law to work, we are actually talking about a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature. So PV equals to K, and K is a constant because NRT gives you a constant. So if we were to plot PV against B or PV against P, you will get a horizontal line where uh, NRT will give you a fixed value and the gradient is zero. Now I want you to pause this recording and take the next uh, five to eight minutes to tackle examples three and four. Now for those students that have tried, we will now look at the solution. So to solve this question is actually quite easy. We just make use of the relationship P1V1 equals to P2V2 for Boyle's law because we are talking about the same mass of gas at the same temperature. So you sub in the values, you get the volume of gas at uh, 150 kPa, which is 231 cm cube. Now for example 4, I will briefly go through the question. There were two glass bulbs and uh, they were disconnected at first. After that, you open the bath and you are asked to calculate the final pressure as a result, as a result of opening the bath. So, to solve uh, example 4, after opening the bath, the total volume that you are talking about becomes an addition of the two separate glass bulbs, which gives a volume of 1000 cm cube. So uh, before opening the bath and after opening the bath, we will apply Boyle's law. So P1V1 equals to P2V2 
So for the volume of 1000 cm cube, the final pressure is 60.0 kPa as shown by this slide. We will now take a look at uh, Charles' law. So for Charles' law, we are actually talking about a fixed mass of gas, but now it is talking about constant pressure. So what this means is that uh, if you manipulate the ideal gas equation, the volume is now actually directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. So we can express it in terms of V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. We will now take a look at Charles Law in greater detail. So Charles Law, do remember that it's referring to a fixed mass of gas at constant pressure. So volume of the gas is directly proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. So V equals to KT and K is a constant. Since NR divided by P is a constant, if we were to plot V against temperature in Kelvin, it will be a straight line passing through the origin. However, if we were to plot V against temperature in degrees Celsius, you will notice that the whole straight line will be shifted to the left and it cuts the x-axis at minus 273. So you have to ask yourself why. The answer is very simple. Because temperature at 0 Kelvin means it is at two, minus 273 degree Celsius. I will now like you to take uh, the next 3 to 5 minutes to attempt example 5. Okay, I hope you have uh, tried example 5. So to solve this question, we have to use Charles' law because we are talking about a fixed mass of gas and at a constant pressure. So we make use of V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2 and you must be careful enough to change the temperature into Kelvin. So if you have done that, you should be able to get the final answer of 212 dm cube easily. We will now take a look at Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law involves uh, maintaining the same temperature and pressure. And what we have here is that the volume of gas will be directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas. So V1 over N1 equals to V2 over N2. Uh, we will now take a look at Avogadro's law. So uh, from Avogadro's law, we can uh, know that one mole of any gas should occupy the same volume. So for one mole of the gas, the volume will also be known as the molar volume. So if you were to look at the data booklet, there are two values that you should be aware of. 22.7 dm cube, which correspond to STP, and 24 dm cube, which correspond to RTP. I would like you to stop the video now and attempt example six. Please take three to five minutes. Thanks for coming back. And to solve example six, let us look at the solution. So remember, we are dealing with uh, Avogadro's law. Uh, the volume of the gas will be directly proportional to its number of moles. So we first find the number of moles for carbon monoxide, 0 0.250 moles. Uh, we can also find the number of moles for helium, which is 1.75 moles. So we make use of V1 over T1, sorry, V1 over N1 equals to V2 over N2. So with that, we can find the volume of helium to be 43.8 dm cubed. Now we will talk something about ideal gas equation. So if we were to combine everything from Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Avogadro's law, everything comes together and get you the ideal gas equation, which is P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. This is true if you were to compare for the same number of moles of gases. So now for this slide, we will play around with the ideal gas equation. Uh, PV equals to NRT, N equals to number of moles of the gas. So N equals to actually the mass of the gas divided by its molar mass. So if we were to do some rearrangement of the ideal gas equation, molar mass actually equals to the mass of the gas times R times DT divided by PV. 
Uh, for this slide, we will do more derivations uh, regarding the ideal gas equation. So to find the density of the gas, uh, density actually equals to mass divided by volume. So density will be equals to uh, pressure times molar mass divided by R and T. So I would like you now to get more practice. I would like you to spend about 12 minutes, 12 to 15 more minutes to attempt example 7 to 10. Uh, so do stop the video now for you to try. Okay, uh, thanks for attempting the examples. It will do you a lot of good if you try it yourself. So for example 7, you can actually solve it by using the ideal gas equation because we are talking about the same number of moles of gases. So P1, V1 divided by T1 equals to P2, V2 divided by T2. So remember that the, the units for T or temperature must be in Kelvin. So after you have sub in the values, you will be able to get the volume of the balloon at the final altitude, which is 11.4 dm cube. Okay, to solve example 8, we will use PV equals to nRT. Uh, mm -hmm. The challenge in this question is to be able to do your units conversion correctly. Your temperature is in Kelvin, pressure in Pascal, and volume in meter cube. So if you have done all that, you should be able to get the number of moles of gas, which is 3.041 times 10 minus 3 moles. Okay, after that, you can solve for the molar mass. Uh, you just need to know that number of moles equals to mass divided by the molar mass, and you do some manipulation. Molar mass equals to the mass divided by number of moles, and you will get the molar mass to be 84.8 .8 gram per mole. But since they ask for relative molecular mass, the MR will be 84.8 .8 because relative molecular mass has no units. Uh, alternatively, another way to solve example 8 is, uh, this is what some of you may have tried. You combine everything together. First, you solve molar mass equals to mass times R times T divided by P and V. Again, the important thing is to change all the units correctly. Temperature in Kelvin. Uh, mass in gram, uh, volume in meter cube, and pressure in Pascal. So what you get is 84.8 gram per mole, and MR will be 84.8, no units. Example 10. So there are actually two parts in example 10 that you have to be aware of. The first part talks about fixed mass of gas. Uh, operating at constant temperature. After that, for the same fixed mass of gas, you could at that pressure, which means the pressure stays the same. So let's tackle the first part of the example first. So for the first part of the example, you will need to realize that actually you can solve the volume uh, using Boyce law. So P1, V1 equals to P2, V2, and V2, if you calculate correctly, should be 3.00 dm cube. After that, for the second part of the question, they said this gas was then cooled at that pressure. So pressure is a constant. So you have to realize that you can actually make use of uh, Charles law. Okay, so V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. And remember that for temperature, you have to be uh, in Kelvin. So the T2 that is calculated will be 200 Kelvin. Now to get better at the application, of ideal gas equation or the various laws, I will now like you to stop this video and try this page on the lecture notes, which is uh, cited under practice time for 10 minutes. I will then upload the solutions for the practice time onto SLS and you will check from there. I've come to the end of the lecture one for gases. So you need to log on to SLS to attempt the post-lecture quiz. In addition, the solutions for practice time can also be found on SLS.